Welcome to the Google Cloud Platform and maybe your forced journey into cloud computing. Um, there's many different forms of cloud computing and this one we're going to use uh, the GCP to create your own personal server that you can access as if it were um, uh, your own machine at your house or somewhere else. But the useful thing is you can connect to this from anywhere. And the Google Cloud Platform allows you to very easily take a machine, shut it down when you don't need it, bring it up when you do, and resize it very quickly to be small uh, and not very expensive when you don't need very much compute resources or to resize it to have a lot of resources, um, which is also expensive, but uh, lets you get through computes faster. I'm going to illustrate the process of creating one of those instances and then show you how to get on the server itself. And some little tasks as we go that uh, I think of uh, that's common and helpful, hopefully. Um, so if you go to the website console.cloud.google.com, this is assuming you've already created a project. Um, there's instructions how to do that uh, in the comments to start with um, of this video, but we'll start with assuming you've created a project and you're ready to create an instance. <clears throat> this is not a new project. I have a couple instances in this already, but the process is the same. So. It gives, uh, at the basic console page, it gives a lot of sort of overview of billing information, how much you're being charged currently. Um, there's some monitoring areas, um, give you an overall uh, glance of how much resources your compute engines are using, if you have more than one even. Um, but over here, this menu area is where you'll access a lot. So you can go to Compute Engine, and then VM Instances. If you just started your project, this will be empty, but I have two already. Uh, here we're going to create a new one. So I'll hover over this create instance. It's pretty interactive and the documentation here is pretty decent about what each of these things are. So you have to give your instance a name and you can't change it once you create the instance. You can delete it and create a new one, but once you can't edit the name of an existing instance. So in this case, I'll do um, class demo. Uh, I don't need any labels. You can choose a region. Um, it usually auto selects a region close to you. Um, this probably doesn't matter unless you're dealing with a lot of different resources or you want to make especially sure, sure that the ping between yourself and your location of the server is close. Uh, in this case, I'm going to leave the default. Here we get pretty important though, this machine configuration section. So you use, you pay for the resources you use on this. And if you notice in this upper corner, it gives you an estimate based on your current choices. So if I left this machine unchanged, uh, it would cost about $25 per month. And again, that's $25 per month while it's running. Um, Google charges, I think it's down to the minute of time that it's running or time that it's off. When it's off, all you pay for is the storage portion of the cost, which is far, far lower than the CPU usage or the RAM usage. So it's very useful to shut these off when you're not using them. I, I tell people to consider them like the lights in your house. Like you don't leave them all on overnight for no reason. Uh, turn it off, save power, save money. Um, in this case, uh, the series, you can choose if it matters what kind of uh, CPUs you have. Often, most people, this doesn't matter so much. It's fine to leave it alone. <clears throat> Here's where it gets really important, the machine type. So this is where it lets you choose how many CPUs or threads do you want, how much RAM, and so on. There are some standard choices. So this, uh, uh, here you'll be put on machines where uh, the, you're sharing cores on a single processor with other Google Cloud Engine users. Uh, the standard ones, though, are more dedicated, and they're also larger. So you can choose that you want four threads or CPUs, 16, and so on as you go up. There's also a custom option. Let's see if you choose custom it allows you to select like you want eight cpus for some reason maybe you don't need very much ram you can do that um, i tell people usually start off minimal to save it cost i would make it two and then make the ram somewhere around maybe eight and we can see those selections change the monthly cost Oh, it's not displaying at the moment. I think we have to finish. 
but you can modify things like that. I think that's also one of the standards. <clears throat> Two CPUs and eight. And that's $50 a month to run that. So again, remember that it's better to start low here. Um, and then when you know you're going to be doing a compute that does require a lot of resources, it takes minutes to shut this instance down, uh, edit it, make its resources larger, and then start it again. And you, you can pretty rapidly change that. So it's, a, it's not something to be scared and make too high just in case. The boot disk section is what operating system essentially do you want to be running here? And there are a lot of options. Um, so I often, um, there's Red Hat, Enterprise Linux, CentOS, Debian, SUSE, uh, uh, when Ubuntu is what I usually use, and I most commonly use 1804. Um, it's not the newest one, the 2004 is available in this case, but I have a lot of familiarity with this one. The disk size. This is important. Um, this is especially important because whereas it is quick and easy to change the CPU and RAM resources, um, and you can easily resize the disk to be larger. The problem is, is if the instance fills up, if you accidentally allow its disk to get completely full, um, bad things. Uh, you won't be able to log into the instance anymore, uh, so it's difficult to manage it. Um, and it is possible to recover the data on the instance, it's just a pain. You have to do a snapshot of it um, and then try to create a new instance that's larger using that snapshot. And there's some special steps to make it work right. Um, so really, it's better here to try to, I do 300 or more. I, I make this a lot larger than maybe I need initially because I really don't want it to fill up. And thankfully, the cost increase on changing the disk is nowhere near as much as it is changing the CPU and the RAM. You also have the choice between standard spinning disks and uh, the faster solid states. Uh, this also costs more. So unless you know that you're, what you're doing is going to have uh, is be I/O bound for the disk, I would stay with standard. Select that. So notice that it added about ten dollars a month or so uh, to the cost because I increased the disk space so much. And then finally, um, there's a couple options down here. Um, you can read about the documentation for most of them, but for uh, those of you in my classes or for people who plan to do web development or have these servers run uh, some sort of a web app, I choose allow full access to cloud APIs. That gives us the ability to do some fun command line stuff to access your APIs. And also you want to allow web traffic. Under here, under management, security and things, uh, if, if for example, you know you're gonna be running a web server, uh, and you have a static IP address, things like that, you can assign those here, or you can even request a static IP address uh, from Google Cloud, uh, but we don't need any of that for this, this simple demo. So we've set our operating system, our compute resources, what Ubuntu or Linux version we want to use, and then just hit Create. It'll spin for usually not too terribly long, um, but keep in mind what's happening here is it's it's allocating all of these resources and creating a virtual server for yourself. Um, the server can be accessed from the standard command line if you have Linux already, but one of the really beneficial things is that uh, under each line, however many instances you have going, um, so this one's finished already, a very, very useful thing to do is on the right here is this SSH button. <clears throat> that provides an access to the server via the command line and you do not have to mess with like setting SSH keys or usernames and passwords or anything else. By the fact that you have access to this in the console, it's assumed you have the ability to get onto the server. So by just clicking one single button, we're there. And there we are. This is, notice I called a class demo and that's what it, that's what it is. I can see how many processors it has. <clears throat> so one up here and then two, here's the second one. RAM, eight gigs like we asked for. And I have a brand new server. Um, here you can start installing applications, um, doing any of the sorts of things you want. 
to space. <clears throat> uh, so I said 300 total, but some of it gets partitioned for the other partitions in Linux. So the usable space that I get is 290 out of that. But um, the here, and of course, if you're doing code or anything else, you can open multiple. No reason you can't open more than one terminal <clears throat> and work with them both at the same time. That's it for this one. Um, do remember when you're done and you're not using it to close your terminals. Click here to select this instance and then hit stop when you're done using it. Also, if you decide you do no longer want it and no longer need it, and be careful, this is quite permanent, but have it selected and you click the trash can and the whole instance goes away and you're immediately no longer billed for that instance, which is very important. Thanks for watching and I hope this helped.